Nelson, here. Tom Coons, here. Emily Leach, here. Andrea Anderson, here. Aaron Cavanaugh, here. We'll stand for the pledge of flags up here in this corner. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Discussion. All in favor of, of um, approving the consent calendar, notify uh, the signify by saying aye. 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 Moving on. All right, announcements and communication. And Charlie, you're up. If All right. you're ready. <laughs> I am. And that's your service. All right, and so this is our last board meeting before um, before the uh, we have our deliberative session, and Charlie is our school district moderator. Uh, he, he was invited here this evening in case he wants to share anything with us or wants to share anything, wants us to share anything with him at this point. The calendar would be helpful. And any thoughts you have about the warrant articles or changes to kind of standard operating procedure at the deliberative session would be helpful to me. I don't think there are any changes to operating uh, procedures. Anyone want to think about how all that was done at the deliberative session? Um, I have a calendar here somewhere. I have a yeah, okay. <laughs> I think it was fine last year. February 4th? Yeah, it's February 4th at 6 p.m. with the uh, snow day. Should there, should there be a reason to, to postpone, it's, the, it's two days later on Thursday at 6 p.m. Uh, so one of the things I think we had a problem with last year was the town clerk being notified. The town clerk, so that the, well, whoever the keepers of the um, checklist. checklist are. Supervisors of the Supervisors checklist. checklist. They got there late, didn't they? Yes, and yes. I think that they weren't aware. So who's, do we know whose responsibility that is? Is it, is it our clerk's responsibility, and that's Tasha Botella, or is it your responsibility as moderator? I'm just sort of, um, I don't really know. I mean, I'm happy to also, you know, the board can also notify. I'll work together on it. Probably the buck stops here in that it's the moderator's obligation to run a good meeting, and you can't run a good meeting if you don't have your supervisors there to check people in. So um, I'll take a hand in it. But I wouldn't, I, I, my, my way of getting in touch, it's helpful to know that it's Angela, but my way of getting in touch with Angela would be through Kate. Angela um, Matthews. Matthews. Oh, oh, okay. Thank you. I, I'd forgotten that too, and I and I thought Kate sort of oversaw that, and that's why I was thinking of getting in touch with the town clerk. But that, you're right. It's probably the right. I think there's been some turnover yep. in the supervisors, so that may may um, affect things as well. Okay. Okay. All right. So, and, and if um, if you want any assistance with that or working on your back, uh, let's do it. Great. All right. So that was the only thing I could think of that we had. Like delay last year getting started. We also, and we do need things from the town office though too, like the ballot box. That's what it was. The one who brings that. Yeah. I think last year we didn't have any secret ballots asked for. We did not. It is, um, it is possible, but the, the statute that allows for five voters to request a secret ballot that applies to the delivery session, as I recall. I believe it does as well. Okay. Okay. And that's right, and, 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 the, and, and, the, and the, um, our, our administrative um, office brings, yeah, brings, the little, brings the little pieces of paper to write on and things like this, which is very it's nice. I think they usually come prepared as well, but you know. You never know when you might need pieces of paper. <laughs> Try to um, 
housekeeping. And that's usually something that uh, the school has, has and, and we have new, <laughs> a new since last year, again, or refurbished, or whatever since last year. Not the speakers, but we yeah, but yeah, the sound system, but we won't need the full sound system. Yes. Oh, that's right. Yes. Child care. That's right. We and I um, uh, do. We as a board want to try to take something on, or uh, is there some other way? There. What did we do last year? Does anyone remember? Good. Good question. Okay. You're looking at some kids. Kids, but I believe they have some teachers as yeah. well. I guess we could do two hours. We um, ask the school to see if our teachers want. Because it seems like, can we just do it with children age, or do we need to have? If, if, if we can just do it with, with children, they need a supervisor from school to be in the room with them. That's the question. We that's have, right. right. So that's our question. Didn't we have two non-residents here that were assisting with that? If I remember right. Yeah. yeah. So the residents didn't miss the meeting. Which is very nice, but again, we the, the board doesn't want to impose on teachers' time, and this right. is an evening. Um, right. <coughs> and and we're certainly willing. You know, we're certainly willing um, also to, uh, to pay something. We, we certainly have enough yeah. money on our budget, and I can't remember if we paid them last year or not. The adults. I think we did, friends, we I think we did as well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we could reach out to. Uh, Well, I'll volunteer my daughter, uh, <laughs> but she needs at least some older kids and maybe an adult. Yeah, and of course we have no idea. So right. That, that's, that makes it difficult. And we would need to know, um, I would say by, probably by a week from Saturday, so we can get it published. Yeah. And out, up. We're talking to Kelly, see if any of the kids can do the rec, summer rec program. This is an experience leading children. Mm -hmm. those kids really All right, do you want to take that on? Sure. Emily? Sure. Yeah. Okay. I think it's a great idea. So Emily will be doing that. You've already volunteered your daughter. Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> And we'll, and we'll just look for an answer from Rich or, or Bob about whether or not we need to, whether or not it's required to have a, an RGS um, person, adult, in the room. Or, or are we pretty sure we do need to? Well, during our PTO meetings, we meet in here, mm -hmm. and we have middle school age kids who watch kids and the staff. Right? Mm -hmm. um, but last year, I believe they were in one of the class from the staff here. So that's a long way to wait. Mm -hmm. Plus there's going to be a lot of adults in the yeah. building, and I, I think yeah. it would make sense to have at least one adult. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. agree. That, that's a good point. Yeah. yeah. That would make me more comfortable. All right, then um, can we ask, you wish to um, sort of pull the staff and see if there's someone yeah. who's, who's willing to do it, and we will. through sort of what you're going to do, but I'll do that again this evening, or we're welcome. I think all of us have been, I think no, no one's new sitting here with it who's no, been through it before we do so. Hey, if there aren't recommendations for changes or requests for changes, I'm 
happy to leave it as it is. I try to run as open and unsurprising a meeting as possible. Now, the warrants, do we have an extra copy of the warrants? Because I, I, I wasn't able to send you. Now, we will, no, they're not finalized. They will not be final until after the budget committee's public hearing. We, have, we actually have a school board meeting scheduled for right after that meeting in case anything changes at that point. Um, we could send them out to you next week. But we can get them out to you next week in a more final form. That's fine. Um, in their draft form, are there interesting, difficult, <coughs> really important things that I should ask? Um, so there are two. There are two that are not non. Uh, there are two. One withdrawal from SAU 56, which has been approved by the by the state board of education as well as Thomasworth and Rollinsworth. And that one, it just might. It might be confusing, although we hope it. And it's simply saying, it's simply, it's simply yeah, asking the board hand, to, I, mean, I do have a jersey on my but um, uh, to approve the withdrawal. We will have our legal help, so. Uh, do you know who that will be? Yeah. I, it's, in the office. Yeah. Okay. And th there, there is a cost involved with that. So, so in other words, the boards, the school boards, of both Summersworth and Rollinsworth have entered into a contract for services. Because it, and that's part of it. I believe it even says in there into contract services. Why am I not just pulling this up somewhere? Hang on a second. I'll do it right here. <laughs> yeah, it right here. Um, to see if the Rollinsworth School District shall accept provisions of RSA 194C providing for the withdrawal from the school administrative uh, unit involving the school districts, well, for the summer's work in accordance with the provisions of the proposed plan. So it's all, this only re re uh, mentions the plan. So they will, and, and during that meeting, we will be explaining what the plan is, and that part of that is uh, contracting with summer's work for services. In essence, no change to what we're currently doing with summer's work. Except, of course, that we now have no voting rights at the SAU level. That's essentially it. And, uh, um, we'll see where it goes from, goes from there. Jen Lentz, sitting behind you, was the chair of the withdrawal committee. And um, she's here to, uh, to help us talk about getting the word out about stuff a little bit later on. And, uh, we do have, we have some very good information. We have, a, we have a slide presentation on, on that, just on that, that sorts of things. And I know everybody's favorite part of serving on the school board is explaining warrant articles at the beginning of discussion. That's all arranged or will be arranged when we get there? It will be. Oh, great. Okay. It will be. My observation is that it's really helpful for the voters. They <coughs> say, hey, this is what it means, here's why we proposed it. And well, I think you're going to see us all kind of jump in on that. No, yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, and I, it, it breaks out pretty e easily. I mean, uh, Emily's our rep at the budget committee, so she would be, you know, on the first one, the budget. Um, uh, Tom and Andrea were our reps at the uh, collective bargaining agreement, so I want to jump in on that. The others, the, the next two are self explanatory, there's, and, the, and then the last two um, are the ones that would be, need a lot more explanation. That The withdrawal, because I think we do have to make sure that the plan's readily available for people. Well, and again, we'll be discussing that later, so they can find it online um, or, or see a hard copy of it. And then the, la the last article that we have on here, and we don't know yet if there are going to be any petition warrant articles, of course, but um, the last one is, is putting in front of the public sort of the results of what it would cost to send the sixth grade next year to Marshwood. Is there a, so that's a, a, a warrant article to present for information, or is there a warrant article on the ballot to send our students, sixth grade students to Marshall? It's an informational warrant showing what it will cost. If the voters say, oh yes, we don't care about the cost, please send them, we will. 
the board is not be supporting that. But we did want to get out in front what the cost was going to be. And we, we haven't fully decided that as a board yet, so again, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll let you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I don't mean to... No, no, I, we're a little, it's, it's, it's the timing of things itself. And no bonds? No bonds. Um, the days of having to do three bonds in a single town meeting are now in my rear view mirror. I'm not speaking for the town, this is just for the school. <laughs> well, it's all SB2, so the deliberative session on a bond I think is a little less challenging. Mm -hmm. That's true. Any other um, questions, concerns, thoughts? Um, and Rich, we'll, we'll spend some time with you. Uh, this Saturday is the budget committee's meeting, so it's the big table up front with the uh, you know, 12, 13, 14 people, the seats for that many people with the school board, um, uh, either in the front row or off to the side with, with, with our supporting cast. And the screen and the... Uh, All right, you guys are good. We're all over. Okay. So just two last things. One, um, I think it was town council. Um, so in this, in the 21st century, the idea that we would have voters who were not literate struck, mm -hmm. struck me as not likely, and therefore I was inclined to rely on all of the published warrants um, mm -hmm. instead of rereading mm -hmm. the full text of the warrant article at the deliberative mm -hmm. session. Town council uh, requested urged, instructed, one of the above, um, that we re actually read the whole warrant article. So we're going to read the whole warrant article. That's the one. It takes up a little bit of time, um, but I think being respectful of the fact that it may be somebody who can't read it is, is, is appropriate. The other request is you may, between now and when you finalize the warrant, you may get wind that there are advocacy groups that want to bring a, a, a petition warrant article if you could encourage you and me, um, my, my general practice is if you're using technology and the petitioners want to use technology, we make the technology available and we mm -hmm. just cooperate with people that way. Um, I also think the voters appreciate having kind of full and fair notice and a, and a good process so that sometimes um, when it seems like a petition is a surprise to, to you and to me and to the voters, it doesn't go so well, and so it, you know, petitioners that we, it, the, the school board isn't bound to support the petition, but we, we can all agree that we're going to have a good process. Um, uh, I'm, I'm happy to talk to petitioners about yeah. you know, finding a that's, spokesperson. And doing that. That's very good. What is the, the final date? Is the 14th? The 14th. It's the 14th of January. Um, so we will know. We will know uh, before the budget committee's uh, public hearing on the town budget, which is the 18th. So we will know before that if there are any petition warrant articles. And at that point, uh, it actually nothing will be final. Our entire warrant won't be final until then, because then we have we have to determine the order. The the, the school board has to determine the order of the and what uh, the order of um, articles. So um, so at that point we'll know. You'll know because we'll send it off to you. Okay. Um, interestingly enough, though, the petitions don't come labeled with who wants to speak to them. That's and true. So I've now been through it a couple of times That's where true. there's a petition warrant article, and it's just it just laid out there uh, for the voters. And again, people have the right to do it that way, but I try to encourage petitioners to if you, if you cared enough to put it on the ballot, you ought to care enough to communicate mm -hmm. You know, well, that happened last year, and it was really clumsy. Because there wasn't anybody really jumping up to be with us. And I, again, my goal is to conduct a meeting where people feel welcome to express views that aren't necessarily popular views. But, um, they feel that they can have their, their say in front of their... It, this is a, essentially a legislative mm -hmm. session. So. Mm -hmm. All right. And we agree with you. We support that, too. Because we, it, again, it, it, I think it's nice for everyone to hear all, all sides. Yeah. And if anything else occurs to you, don't hesitate to be in touch. Vice versa. If there's anything we can do. All right. Thanks. Well, thank you, Charlie. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you. It's, good to get, it's good to get these things straightened out. All right, the uh, superintendent's update.
Uh, just a couple of things for tonight. Uh, first, I'd like to talk about the, the chain of communication. Um, specifically, or we had uh, talked in the past about, about uh, if a parent has a concern or it comes back to administration, and that's well. Uh, and thing working really well during the budget committee with the process there. If there were any questions from the budget committee about what's going on. They went to Emily, Emily got in touch with us, and then we responded back to Emily to take back. It just simply, by doing it that way, and it's worked really well, we're not responding to individual uh, budget committee members or individual board members. Uh, everybody gets the same information at the same time. So I just want to say that worked really well, and Emily did a great job at kind of being there. So thank you very much for that. One of the things that I've talked about in the past was there's, there's a gentleman, Jamie Volman, um, in his own words, uh, was very much a public education. He's a business, was a businessman, and, and was finding fault with public education and, and how the process was and the old adage of, you know, run it like a business. And the more he got into it and the more he learned about public education, he understood that, that businesses and public education don't operate the same. They can't operate the same. We, we, uh, educate every single child coming through the, the doors, no matter what the need, specific needs are. Uh, and the more he got into it now, after more than a decade, he's one of the biggest spokespeople nationwide for public education. And one of the things that he, he brings to, to light is the number of things that schools are charged with and the responsibilities that they're charged with. And he put together a little, and this now is about a decade old, but it gives you the idea of you know, he, he showed what happened in, you know, 1900 to 1910, 1910 to 1940. And you can see there were a few things added to the play public education. Um, and certainly as you moved into the 50s, science and math education were expanded and then Head Start in the 60s. And then you can see after you reach the 80s, 90s, and into the 2000s, it's just exploded. The responsibilities, the, the day hasn't gotten any longer. Um, the amount of contact time that we, we have with children, but now everything from, you know, stranger danger to cyberbullying to organ donors, date rape, STEM programs, race to the top, online education, I mean, it goes on and on and on. So I'm just giving these to the board members. Just to, it's, a, it's a good read. It, it's a, an interesting read. Um, and again, my hat's off to all of our educators who are doing, on a daily basis, just doing a phenomenal job at reaching the individual needs of all of the students. So I have one of these for each of the board members and anybody else that would like to, to look at it. Certainly I have extras and, and his name is Jamie Walmer um, and he's got, he's got uh, information online as well. But um, just a, a real interesting reminder to all of us what an outstanding job our educators do on a daily basis. And I think one of the points that, that some of us <coughs> miss is that as that list of what educators are doing expands, so does all of the paperwork and the administrative work that goes with it expand it as well, which you don't realize unless you do it. And, and, and when, when does that work? Get? So you know, I think that's amazing. It's just amazing. It, it's a nice reminder to, to see it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's all I'd like to touch on tonight. We've got, obviously got a number of other things that are on the agenda, but. Um, that's it for tonight. Okay, thank you. Any, other, any questions for Bob at this point? I'm just glad you didn't make us read that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll hand them out so you can get a closer look at it. <laughs> uh, Principal Hartford's update now. Uh, so I was going to touch on a couple of things. Uh, some of them might be in my report, but uh, most of them aren't. Uh, I just wanted to update you on the water testing um, that's been happening uh, since you know, last spring and we've gone through the summer and um, Dick's done a nice job of you know step-by-step -step process so that we're facing everything in all of the rooms that were affected and then finding out that it didn't fix the problem and then trying something else he's been going one room at a time retesting sending in the sample waiting for the state to say you meet the requirements or no that uh, you don't meet the requirements and then you'll do that room something else. Um, so he thinks he's figured it out with, you know, the pipes and the faucets that he's used. Uh, we're down to one room that he's got to replace and get tested, and that's the room right behind you. 
Um, again, all of the rooms that are affected, kids don't drink out of those faucets. There's signs there. Um, it's used for washing hands at most. Um, but uh, once he has all done, then he's going to go through and retest all four affected areas to make sure that now that we've done everything, you know, that they're still in compliance. And then the state offers a grant to um, reimburse the district 50% of what we've spent. So he's kept all of the um, invoice and all that together once he's done. He just wanted to share to make sure that you folks continue to know that he's still working on it and the state is pleased with what he's doing. Well, that, that, that's excellent and, and uh, you know, good, good scientific approach, I think. Not, not all of us would think of, well, let's just make sure it works before yeah. we do it all. Yeah. That's, um, yeah. that's really good. Um, I, let's see, a community relation type things. Um, we've had a representative from the Rollinsford School on the um, Rollinsford Garden Club. It's a longer name than that, but I can't remember what the whole thing is, but it's part of the Rollinsford Garden Club. Um, that was Becky Wright in the past, and obviously she retired. And as she was getting ready to retire last spring, she was pulling off jobs on anybody and everybody who would volunteer for them. So our two kindergarten teachers, Katie Riendo and um, Abby Ayers, volunteered to co-represent the school and continue to be a part of the garden club. So they've been attending. A member of the garden club has been coming to our playground committee at the PTO because part of our idea is an outside learning area where we want to integrate some ideas from the garden club out in that area for kids to use for scientific research and that type of stuff. So, good relationship that we have. Great. Um, the other thing is we had um, a program called the Foster Grandparent Program approach me a couple of years to see if we were interested in having a volunteer foster grandparent. Um, it's an official program out of Concord. Um, don't have to have been in education if you, you know, or somebody that wants to volunteer time at schools and help out kids and we have a resident in Rollinsford who's been doing this program for 10 years in Rochester and Milton and um, recently moved to Rollinsford about a year ago and has found that the trip up to Milton every day is a little too far so thought you know, let's be interested so we have Jean Gilman coming four mornings a week, maybe all five mornings a week. So up to 20 hours a week she's volunteering in our two first and second grade classrooms and has needed in the garden. She'll work with kids on um, if they're in small groups for reading, if they need extra assistance with writing. Um, sometimes we have math in the morning and she'll have to go where the area of need is for struggling with math and help out there. Um, she started and is fitting right in. Her, she has named herself Graham. That's what she expects all the kids to call her. Um, so Graham is now a member of our RGS community. Um, and then two other things. I'll bring you occasional updates from our playground committee that came last time and I've got your blessing to move forward, and um, I, we had a meeting last night, but to I... To continue planning, yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. We, we, we haven't given them permission to dig up the... Uh, no, 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 no. Any, no do before we, we do any heavy duty changes, right you know, we'll come forward and close in. Um, so we've got a little bit of direction <coughs> based off of last night's meeting, and um, we'll get to that point. I'll be the one that comes forward, and you know, members of the playground committee want to join me. Some of it is things that we can do on our own anyways. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the soccer goals need to be painted at some point and the nets back out know, the kids are asking for nets so they don't have to chase the ball all the way to
pay our first concert with our new music teacher. But ah. it is before mm -hmm. the board meeting, okay. and oh. it's only about a half an hour. Mm -hmm. um, but I just wanted to forewarn you because I think a couple of you may want to attend that mm -hmm. uh, performance. Um, and he has been made aware that a couple of you have kids who will be performing, and he's going to make sure that they perform early in the program okay. so that you Thank can you. come to the yeah. board. What time is that, Rich? Six o'clock. Yeah. So parking. If you drive in and see a ton of people here, um, just know that there's a lot of people here too. You know, <laughs> because it's just the band and chorus. And, then that. and it's expected to be about a half hour program? Half hour or? Hour program. Okay. And we can also talk about postponing the start of our meeting. Now move on to our March. We have and we have Nicholas here, who is you know a month of he's, he's a month into his 18th year, ish. All right. Congratulations. Thank you. And uh, all right, Nick, what the, what do you have for us tonight? Um, not a lot, considering we're coming off of a pretty long break. Mm -hmm. um, so we are approaching the end of the first semester. That ends officially next Friday, the 17th. Um, and then the following two today is our midterm week. So we have two midterms on Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, and then the last one on Friday. And this year for the first time on that Saturday we have a winter formal dance. Um, it just got approved today, I guess. So, um, it should be a fun way to kind of transition to the third quarter in the last half of the year. Um, we have our quiz show team, um, and they qualified for the main public television's academic contest for the fourth year in a row. Yeah, um, that's great. It's 16 teams, single elimination bracket, kind of just like moving down to the championship. Um, filming of that has started, and it airs starting February on um, main public television, and I'm assuming it will be on the as in the past. Um, Sports have started and they're all in full swing now. So we have um, boys and girls hockey, basketball, wrestling, and we have cheerleading, we have a ski team, and indoor track, and also unified basketball has started back up. Um, and as I had mentioned last meeting, I am going to try to do college acceptances. So I do have a couple. Marshalls Morocco got accepted and committed to St. Joseph's College. Um, Haley Lawrence got accepted to the University of New England. Um, Eli Janados got accepted to the University of Kentucky. And I got accepted and committed to Providence College. Congratulations. Awesome. Saved himself for last. <laughs> yeah. um, and that's all I have. So difficult to um, get everyone who gets not everyone like, announces all of their acceptances, usually just like the commitments. So I'm trying my best to keep up with everyone, but this is what I have confirmed so far. So I'm going to just keep adding to this list month by month, and then hopefully it will grow as the months come. That's very nice. And, and it, 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 we, we do appreciate it. It's nice knowing uh, where, where uh, just that folks yeah. are going. And if, if they don't want to give their name, if you just want to say, and you know, and Rawls for President Olympics, if they don't want to give their name and make it public, they don't have to. But um, that's yeah. pretty nice. And congratulations on Thank the you. audience. <laughs> that's all I have. All right, thank you very much. All right. You're welcome to stay. Can I ask one question? Oh, yeah. Have you um, played a major? Political science. Nice. And then hopefully law school after that. Wow. Oh, very nice. Any, any other questions for now? No, no, no that's all I need to know. I'm just curious. I'm always curious. We'll put them on retainer. We'll put them on retainer. And uh, is any of this contingent on how you finish out your career? <laughs> <laughs> or, or are you now uh, like done? So. As long as. This guy gets turned. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be all set. <laughs> so hope I don't lose it on the way to yeah. my car. <laughs> That's great, Nick. Well, we look forward to seeing you next month. All right. and, uh, during the list grow. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very, very much. much. All right, we are moving on to the financial update. Um, so uh, this is uh, so the current year's budget. Yeah. Um, at this point, we've been.
encumbered all of our uh, March Board tuition. So since the last update, special ed is, was encumbered. Nancy went through it all and you know verified everything. So we do have a savings for March with special ed in the budget about thirty-eight thousand dollars. However, she also students that are placed mm -hmm. out of district, and so in that area we are over budget. Um, they are working on transportation still. I noticed when I'm doing mm -hmm. that, so okay. they are working for the next report. That will be encumbered as well, because okay. along with out of district kids also comes the transportation to along the way. So, yeah. um, as far as revenue, we did receive our first payments for adequacy, and also um, <coughs> a little over a thousand bucks from the state for our special ed students that attend charter schools every year. We get a little for that. So that's coming in as unanticipated revenue for mm -hmm. this year. And then I just added at the bottom that that mm -hmm. transfer was made to the trust funds for the $97,000. And I updated the uh, totals in there for you. So that has been completed. All, all right, any questions on the current year's budget? Maybe. Yeah, I have a question on the technology lines. Equipment and uh, placement equipment. Mm -hmm. We have a lot left over in those. Is that something? Mm -hmm. So, will it be spent? Yes. What's... Some of it, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think what we did right until the budget was voted on to okay. um, we could continue to purchase ahead. Usually the budget, after we get into February and certainly March, we get a real clear <coughs> handle on, on what we're going to have left, and then we can have more conversations about that. We try to be <coughs> a little bit conservative until we get to the February, March time, and then we can come back to the board and suggest some other some other avenues to get ahead. Um, and Nancy, you mentioned that And the enrollment has gone down. If you notice in your enrollment, I did, I did notice that. Yeah. Um, yeah. You've, you've gone down for some students, mm -hmm. as well as some we had were special ed and are no longer here. So that added a layer because we had the base tuition as well as some services. Right, right. So, okay. yeah. Of the contingency students, plus the, you, have, you know, yeah, you've had a drop of two right. students. Mm -hmm. okay. It does look like we're in uh, reasonable shape. I, I think we're actually, I know the number, but I look back a year and we're about, we're about where we were a year ago um, on this because, as, as, as Dr. Galanti said, we don't know much more until we get there, but it's good to keep up with what's happening. I did see the drop in two students at, yeah. at Marshwood, so yeah. people must have moved or something. Yeah. So um, it's a difference. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other questions on the budget? For in the current year's budget. All right, then uh, we will move on to our to the budget presentation to discuss and, and discuss it. Uh, Katie, I know worked on the presentation. I believe. And, and have something out here that I picked up too, just for information for us up here. Um, information the, uh, from the state. Uh, a year ago, in 2018, in 2018, Rollins were out of, out of all of the municipalities in Stratford, uh, uh, Rollinsford was the fifth highest in, uh, for local education costs, fifth highest. So there were four, people, four municipalities that were higher, eight that were lower. This year, we are the seventh highest. We are right in the middle. There are six higher and six lower. So our cost compared to the other municipalities in Stratford County, uh, you know, dropped in, in that comparison. So you, you can see, I, I got, 
tried to get some of this information as a few more of them. Yeah. I thought it was very interesting information that that it shows it's not a bad place um, at this time. And, and just I, I have to you know we give credit to our to our administrators for uh, including the and the school for for doing this this hard work of trying to keep us where a, in, in sort of a good place. I think right in the middle is a really good place. Um, so. This is the latest final information. It is, it is it, the tax year that just ended in our in our December tax bill is what we're is, is 2019. So that's that shows that that's um, and so in 2019 only Farmington had a lower tax rate overall. That's everything town everything, and that was only by 37 cents. That's Farmington. And only Madbury had a lower valuation, which is what your taxes are based on. I know this can get a little bit confusing. Uh, but their local education costs were $7 higher than ours. So I thought that was interesting. And population-wise, of the closest we are are New Durham, <coughs> New Durham and Madbury. A small community, I think, I think we're doing a very good job altogether uh, trying, to keep, trying to get us to where we want to be and, and keeping us there. So share that information because I think it, I think it's really good information to have to, to see where we stand it is and especially comparing us to some of these communities that have much higher population yes and we're still you know coming out kind of in the middle that's that's mm -hmm. really amazing yeah I, I had some like, there were some surprises to me uh, on this um, but yeah yeah I mean, Do Dover has a relatively low local education, but its tax rate, but its overall tax rate is higher. So their their citizens are paying for while well, they're not paying quite as much as we are for 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 their local oh, education, yeah. they're paying more for other things, like full time fire departments, for you know, police, all those things, mm -hmm. roads. And things. But it's just very interesting mm -hmm. to see that. Yeah. And it's good to let. Yeah. It's, it's it's good for all of us to know what it is. Yeah. But. So that's a starting point that I uh, yeah, wanted to talk as, and, and things that we might want to have sort of sort of in the back of our minds as we talk to community members who ask questions about, you know, uh, how come we're not doing, how, how come we aren't as low as, you know, uh, I don't know, but why, why, why isn't our local education as low as Dover? Well, you know, we're paying less than $2 more, but your overall tax rate is lower too, so I mean, anyway. All right, so now on to the... Uh, presentation that is last year's yeah, is a, is a model. Yeah. Yep. Have folks had a chance to look through it? Mm -hmm. So one of the things we know is now is that uh, the moderator will be reading the full warrant article. I think we did sort of forego that last year. Uh, but So that's good. job here showing the increases and decreases and where they are. I know that um, last year I had a set, this is, this is the place to go into this much detail, I think, so uh, you know, I, I, what do other people feel about it? Yeah, the one thing, and I, I missed it, but I apologize. Um, I find it's good to know, and maybe not a slide, but just so that we can have it in our minds, what percentage of the operating budget <coughs> There is, there, there, that list is what is what is in the default budget essentially. Yeah. There, there's yeah. a, is, that, is that on a slide? Well, it's there's a slide on the default reduction, yeah. like what we yes. would see able to do if the default budget was passed. So in in essence, that's okay. the list of what. But I can give you. I always feel like it's nice to be able to be like. Oh, I see. I, I, yeah, I know what you're talking about. I actually about. have within my my Excel spreadsheet yeah. a graph that shows right. that. So I that's right. That, that high chart that's been yeah. that we've seen before. Yeah. I think that would be good to have. Yeah. Good morning. Oh yes. Okay. I'm looking at the 
and I think as a slide, I think that would be a good thing to have as a slide. Up to, to yeah, really, I so think we can point to it. Yeah. It's just that I, I feel like you know, a lot of people don't understand that the budget by two hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars for one thousand, mm -hmm. you know. Or that if we do, what it affects. Yeah. Or, or, or not if we do it, but if some if someone else right, chooses exactly. to do it, what, what it affects. Yeah. And it's just identifying those things as contractual obligations. Yeah, you, the, the, it usually shows like what percentage of salaries and benefits, yeah, what is, exactly. you know, transportation or items and all the other like supply, yeah. little That's slice. Yeah. 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 I, can, I can add that in here. Thank you. I know you've been, you've been working with the budget committee, so you, you, know, you know more of what might be helpful for them to see and for, and yeah. for the public to see. So when I was modeling it after last year's, we had like a lot of slides in there last year about the withdrawal process and a few extras. So I didn't, I, you know, obviously I took those out, but I didn't know if there was any slides you wanted to put in with details on the withdrawal at that point, you know, or is it just something you're going to talk about without slides? One of the things Katie and I kind of briefly discussed was um, not including all of that and kind of muddying the slides, but certainly talking about it in depth, whether it's the, whether it's the withdrawal uh, or if you choose to put the grade six on, it's kind of the same thing. Instead of doing multiple slides to kind of muddy the water, certainly getting all that information out in the presentation. Yeah. Verbal presentation. It's more of a for each one. Well, in here you've got you've got the start of them listed. You just got the so, Warren article language. So we were, we were planning on just presenting, unless you want to change it, presenting the Warren article and then speaking in depth about the numbers and facts and those types of things. And I think that's good. But I, I and I think we have we have a wonderful presentation. And I don't know if it needs to be edited. The one that was done for the withdrawal that we did during the um, public hearing for the withdrawal. We could also put that, I mean, I'm going to have copies of this presentation as well as I have prepared a budget packet to put out. We could put those PowerPoints as like a handout. So if we could get that a tweet, um, Dan, are you um, yeah. able to bring it kind of up to date? Yeah. And just like, um, yeah it's not a lot. By, by Saturday. Or morning. tomorrow if I need but, I mean, tomorrow. <laughs> Saturday's hockey, so tomorrow's fine. Yeah. Any time before tomorrow morning would be fine. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just take the page out. <laughs> oh, okay. yeah. There's a timeline slide that just needs to be updated, but I think fundamentally everything else is okay. And even if you have a timeline and just kind of bold where we are, you know, we're at the vote. <laughs> okay, we're, we're here to vote on it now. So we could put all of that information. Yeah, right if I could leave you my email, maybe, and you could just shoot me an email with it, I can make copies tomorrow at the office. And, and we'll talk. We'll talk a little yeah, bit about how many that's, copies. That's, yeah. <laughs> we'll talk later about that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and in terms of the sixth grade, I I, I would say that that's fine. We'll just just mm -hmm. discussion. Mm -hmm. so that you I don't think discuss. that we should have. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't know if you wanted, yeah, like the summary of oh. the costs or. Oh, I see. Yes. You probably oh, should. That might be helpful. Mm -hmm. slide. Yes. Do you want that as a slide or do you want it in any information you can have? What do you feel is best in one? Oh. I feel like a slide. Well, if it's a slide, yeah. it will be handed yeah. out. If it's a slide, right. it will be handed out. I feel like it's a slide, so when we're talking about it, people can be looking at it. Do that you want just that out. summary page that says tuition? Transportation, so. yeah, for the total. Yeah. All on one slide. All on one slide. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I think everything else is just a lot of numbers. Mm -hmm. Just throw out some of the things that we need to talk about. That's what this is. You were saying not to have that yeah. slide? Yeah. Because it's an opportunity to talk about it. You'd prefer to talk rather than have the slide up? 
So it can we do both? Well, I suppose we can. Yeah, and I, I am going to put it online, too, so for people who aren't sitting there listening to the discussion, it might be helpful to see the breakout. Well, I just think it would be helpful for people to see how we... As long as it's all broken out. Yeah, we can break out the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah, otherwise they're looking at a total number. Right. And nope. mm -hmm. and, you know, this puts the understanding behind those numbers. Yeah. Will there be an area on these indicating what we were supporting or not supporting? Yes, after we, after we, uh, if we want to uh, go through, go ahead. I think that comes at our presentation we do at Deliberative because recommended until after this presentation by the budget committee. Right, the budget committee will be doing their recommendations right after the presentation. Um, we, I, I thought that we might be at, decide, deciding that ourselves this evening, what we would have, so that the budget committee will also know what we are right. uh, supporting. Now, we are, we're not able to do that all yet because we'll have non-public bargaining agreement and then we'll come out of that non-public to, to, to take the vote on that, but, um, yeah. Okay. So, Jeff, you want to add that then, once you decide what you're recommending? Am I adding that to this presentation? And that's, and that's a question. I mean, we're going to know, but do we want Katie to add them at this point for, for Saturday's meeting? Why do you feel you like whether the board recommends yeah. or not? We certainly could. Then the budget committee would know mm -hmm. what the board's are working with against. And right. also people running now. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Right. Are we going to, I mean, I guess the question, you know, is anything that the budget committee is going to say or do that would change our mind after the meeting? Yes. Or it could be. That's um, an excellent question. You could also re-vote, though, because you, mm -hmm. if there are any changes that the budget committee might recommend, um, you're going to have a meeting directly after that meeting. So if you want to adjust any of your votes at that point, you certainly could. Okay. Okay. So, does it, so it, it, if there's any chance that we might change a vote, I mean, I don't know. Is it more confusing not to put it on until afterwards? Until well, after we'll, we'll you didn't put it on right. last year because this is the exact yeah, template right. of last year. Right. So it, was, it, wasn't for the, it wasn't on the budget committee. It wasn't uh, on the been on the one we presented at the delivery. Yes, on the delivery. Yeah. I would say that would it wouldn't. Go you know, either way. I would just saying. Mm -hmm. just, it's not so and hearing what the public says too may change your mind on what you recommend as well. That's Never true. Know. As a matter of fact, we might even want to put it at um, <laughs> what. Um, even though, because this isn't an official warrant, right. we could say, um, you know, we, yeah, yeah, go, you know, yeah. Go, go, going going into the public hearing, school board recommends. I mean, we could actually say that. Maybe we wait. It's going to be pretty clear what, what we support and what we don't. And we can even say it out loud because right. we, we can discuss it. We can discuss it tonight and have an idea, and then um, so that we're speaking. I think the budget committee should know what we're feeling, and it's, so I think we should know so that Emily can present that in the meeting afterwards. Yeah. I, think that, I think that's very important that we decide, and, um, and that Emily can then do it in the actual meeting where they're talking oh, about. Oh, I just thought we would. My my thought process was this is an opportunity for the public here as well. Those that are going to be in attendance, so. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm not. I, I don't think it's bad to, to say what, what 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 we think what, what we think going in, what our recommendation yeah. is going in. So we'll, we'll come up with the right wording. Good question. But but Emily, have you had a chance to look at this for all the year? Yeah. And any other questions now? For just just one this? thing about the um, the. Uh, Article 6 yeah, we, we haven't done for the teacher's contract um, that is ratified tonight by the board. Mm -hmm. um, then that will be all set. I haven't heard back from the union. I'll touch base with them tomorrow. Okay. Uh, and if it's ratified by them, 
then we can put it in. If not, we're not going to be able so to put it in. No, we can't put it in, right? Correct. So. Correct. And, 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 they, and they will be until the 14th. It won't be. My <coughs> will be until the 14th. Right. Correct. Okay. At which point we could probably still present it at the town budget, if we, town budget here. And we still need to have a hearing. Yeah, would we have to have a separate meeting? Would, would we have to have a separate school meeting to have a hearing on the, uh, a public hearing on the, uh, well, would the budget committee have to have a, uh, uh, that's a legal question. If, if, we, if we haven't heard from the union tomorrow. Yeah, I can find that. Okay, thank you, because, well, we'll have to see, because if, if, if we don't know, or if it's not ratified, you know, we have to know, if, if, are they the same? If we don't know if they're not in it. Does it mean like if we don't go forward with it, period? Mm -hmm. uh, it's, not, it's not meeting them. Okay, thank you. Good question. <coughs> Any, anything else on this? <laughs> Why is it so confusing? <laughs> <That's right. laughs> That's the way it is. <laughs> anything else on next year's budget? Right now this comes to mind. I mean, we, are, we will be um, talking about the collective bargaining agreement and all public coming out. And, and taking our vote on that. So I think that's the only other thing. Okay. Did you want to talk about copy numbers now? Or how many copies you want me to make of all this? So yeah. for, for Saturday, I would say let's not go crazy. What did we have last year? About 40 people? Yeah. I had a lot left over. Yeah, well, whatever. I think I did a hundred. And you took some, I believe, to the town. I did. Dropped them off. And, and, and left some, some here, I think. And some yeah. to the library. So, I mean, I mean, certainly. And I can bring them again to the deliberative, you know. Yeah. But, although we'll have another presentation for that one. Yeah, I certainly wouldn't do any. I, I do 40, right? That's what Tom's saying. What do other people think? It's, it's, a, it's a, I hate to see those stacks. I know. Okay, 40. Yeah. It's too many. It's too many. Ours, yeah. Yeah. Ours wasn't on a Saturday. Yes, it was. The committee public hearing is okay, all, okay. always on the Saturday. Yeah, I'm confused. I know. Okay. But I think we had about the same for uh, public oh, hearing. 30. Public hearing might be less. What was it, 30? We compromise at 30? Yeah. Let's go with 30. 30. Can we just give them a little less. card with the link? And on? I will post it online tomorrow so it's there. Yeah. And we can, there's a board, there's a whiteboard there. We can put the link up. Well, they can go find it. On the screen. Yeah, yeah. It's, it is going to be on the screen. People want to find it afterwards. They can always from us. They can't find it. I also did a copy of the packet of the budget. I'm going to make copies of it for you guys to look at. It's all the same information. It's just, in, you know, we always put a copy of the budget out as well. It is true. I'm sorry. I'm keeping them all. So this is the same, book, the same right? one. <laughs> okay. This is just the packet that I'm going to hand out. So I just know this one. Well, we'll look at them and make sure that you oh, don't want any oh. other information in there. It's oh. the same well, we did last year. Well, except for the little pie chart. Okay. Yes, I can add that. Little pie chart. Well, it's gonna be, that's going to be in the presentation. That's going to be in the presentation. Yeah. Okay. 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 Everyone's paging up. That's really nice. <laughs> yes, really. It's the same substance. It's the 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 the, the, the memo with the highlights. Okay. It's the three yeah. different budgets. Yeah. The total with the elementary. Emily's looking for high. her favorite line. It's the revenue budgets and. Um, yeah. No. It's nice. Okay. I think that's very nice. Could you organize my lunch, please? I know. Can you color it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> So I'll do 30 copies of those as well. <coughs> yeah, so those can always be reused too for the deliberative. Right, the right. Now, <coughs> yeah, as long as there's no... We can go through and hand yes. them. Yeah, right. 
All right, so we're sort of moving into the deliberative session discussion now, and we've had a little discussion already, so there's going to be some um, checking on child care. Yeah. Anything else we decided on? And, what, and, and an adult in the room kind of thing. It's going to look into. So, so uh, we, we, shift, we shift to the deliberative now. So, because this is, except for Saturday, this is our last meeting before the deliberative session, I'm going to talk about how we're going to get the word out on things, and that's part of what Jen is here to, uh, for what the withdrawal committee might be able to do as well. So, oh, go ahead. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's go back in. All right. Thank you. All right. So we're going back to grade six. We're looking at what now is Article Ten. We don't know if it'll remain that. It might be a different article. Uh, this here for Allensford School District will raise an appropriate. $326,000 to support the first year of sending grade 6 students to March with the school. New middle school starting in 2021. Every year thereafter, the appropriate amount will be placed in the operating budget. I know, Tom, that you're, um, you're very interested in having it on so that the information gets out. Other folks? I agree with Tom that we need to get the information out and have a vote on it, but I can't in good conscience talk about sending this year's fifth graders to middle school next year and telling them that in March. So they essentially have three months left to be prepared to make that transition. Um, I don't to the parents, to um, the staff here at the grade school who would have to sort of shift gears um, to help prepare them. Um, I, and I, but I don't know the logistics of, you know, having a vote now for a, a year in the future. I don't know if that's even possible. Um, but that worries me a lot. Those two things too. The costs will clearly be different. So the dollar amount will almost be a point. Yeah, I mean, it's a really good point. Yeah, I, I think so it's are, a good point. We are providing an estimate because the number of students really could change. More okay. cost of tuition will change. change. Um, this is the best estimate at this time with the information that we have. Yeah, I mean, I, I would imagine that it's it's a ballpark figure. It would change for sure, but not probably by the grant or something. It would be, I mean, are you are you considering whether we should change the year to not? Sure, you could do that with the dollar amount in there, though, because you wouldn't want to add three hundred twenty-six thousand dollars to your budget for next year if no. you're not planning on sending right. right. next year. So. And, and I'm okay. not sure that you can. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of the wording. If, if we were sure that you could commit something like uh, with the appropriate corresponding figure to be put into the twenty-one twenty-two budget. I don't know how. But then what happens if that follows the dollar amount where an article fails? Or do you automatically just put it in the budget? I think if it passed, it would just automatically. automatically. I don't know. And you know. make that decision on a future I year. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah, that would be more confusing. It does get more confusing. Uh, I, I, I completely agree that it's, it's, it's too abrupt. It's too abrupt. And that, and that I, I, I believe, I, I know that my position would be to say that the school board does not recommend. That, that we would not want this done this year. I agree. Yeah. 
and but we can't we can't predict what the public will do. Right. And and so the, if they say yes, that then we're left with the kids, the staff, the parents are all left with three months to scramble. How did we? Was, I was just was it done that way with the height? Sure. Were we there was, was so it, was much it talk. Voted on in March, and then they immediately did this at on year lapse. There was so much talk, though. Years for, for, there was there was the decision. Yeah, like there there were things done, right. and then by the time on the warrant article, it was the next year. Was but it, it but, but but was it the following September? I don't remember being that. And, re, and remember we and remember we were phasing kids. Right. Not everybody had to yeah. go. Right. Right. Um, but every sixth grader knew that he or she was going to go to yes. middle some, school yes. next some, year. Somewhere. Right. Yes. They had to go somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, were yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. they were living regardless, staying in this building. And the decision was made long, long enough in advance, so it was simply a matter of, it was simply a matter of the, the contract being approved. I just can't remember if it was the dollar amount in there as well, but it was just that they're going. There was no dollar amount. There were no dollar amounts attached to it. It was well, just and you already had right. Summersworth's tuition yeah. built into your budget, right? right. Yeah. Right. So we had that chunk, and then they were relatively close. I mean, mm -hmm. with the lower base tuition and plus the so whole card. It, yeah. Because we we, we we were voting on the contract to right. send our students, and, the, and we could vote on that a year ahead because the contract took effect. Right. Yeah. Not not the fall not not yeah. there, but the following. Yeah. I, I believe that's how it went, right? Because the contract didn't take effect, and we were voting on the contract. Yeah, I think that's how it went. And then the, the contract had the formula in it, but not the exact amount. Yeah. So, it was I mean, a very I good. That, I think that you would. I'm trying to think this through. I, I think that you would be able to put in a warrant article that would guide the board to students during the 21-22 student uh, school year to Marshwood. And the appropriate amount would be budgeted into that budget. So obviously, you're not putting a number on the Warren article, but the Warren article itself is basically saying that you will build that next year. But I think the town does need to know. I think it's very important to know the cost because it's the, it's the cost that well, I would that's that's be objecting to. Right, that, that's going to make that very difficult to get accurate information out and right. have people. I mean, that's kind of what happened last right. year. Plus, any um, dollar amount you put on here gets added to your budget, so you wouldn't want to do that for next right. year if yeah. you're not sending them until right. the following year. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm just dollars. saying that, yeah. that you would put that into your budget for 21 yeah. 22. Yeah. This, but, the, but the 326 would, would not. Off. Yeah. And then, and then we're in the situation of, of the petition warrant article last year that just said, you know, you're going to send them, send them, and look into sending them. How it was yeah. weird, but um, this is tough. And I, I was very um, surprised that um, folks didn't quite understand the math that was involved in sending students. So that really kind of surprised me. Because, you know, in our other discussions, I was really, you know, people are going to see this and they're going to be able to make a solid, mindful decision. The question and about the question is around budget. Budget, yes. Yeah. So I, I left there this, this part. Yeah. Well, well, I think that that's what I just didn't. I, I, because it was to apply a very simple, well, uh, almost a deduction. Well, if you send them here, you don't need this. But the fact is, many of the things here don't change, cost-wise. And you have the addition of costs, you know, busing, all that other stuff, that um, it's kind of hard to explain. Because it's not, you know, comes out of here, goes over there. Because if it was that easy, no, the dollars wouldn't be the issue. That's why the summary sheet is really. Important. That's why it, it is important that, I, but and, and it is difficult to explain. But if you when you live in a you, you live in a house with two parents and three children, and the eldest decides to join the service at 18, your household expenses are not cut by one fifth. 
you know, they're not cut by one fifth. You right. still have to pay for the house. You still have to. Right. Right. You still have to. You know, do all the things that have to be That's done. Big. <laughs> what? The food. The food. Oh, right, right. you do say the food for an 18 year old, but still. But, I mean, it's, it's, yeah, you still have the same expenses. We, we said we would create this, we did. We said we would have our meeting, our forum, we did. As I said last time, I don't think there's any reason why we need to delay this. If this thing is voted, it's voted for. If it's voted down, we're done. It's really that simple. We're done. I mean, $326,000. This town wouldn't vote for a fire truck, which we would consider, you know, a necessity. I'm, I'm really struggling to see why they'll vote for this. This is a lot of money. This isn't seventy. This is three hundred and twenty-six thousand dollars annually. Annually, it's not going away. It's not a one-time cost. Bigger. Yeah, and every costs are going to change. And we're talking about you know a population in our school that will be increasing. So that means every year that number is going to reflect that. Whatever is going to be the same. Because you only have the savings of the staff reduction in one year. Which are shown in the. And yeah. frankly, you know, after the forum, um, you know, I understood what some of the questions were. Um, but at the end of the day, there was also, you know, the discussions of the things that were offered. And then some of the things, you know, later weren't necessarily as described. Like some of the sports conferences, the sprayers. That was a huge argument. And then to find out that, well, they're not necessarily offered to the six graders. That's a big thing. And as I said, you know, if we're serious about, you know, addressing this, then this, you know, should be an opportunity for us as a board to say, what can we do here for the sixth grade? What, what can we do? What were the takeaways from that form, from the discussion? That we can we can bring you know, to fruition. I mean, everything is going to cost money, one way or another. But three hundred twenty-six thousand dollars a year. Oh man. So, Tom, what I hear you saying is that you your your preference still is to put this on, with school board does not recommend. I'm saying we need to bring this to the public. What we're going to say, as far as what we support, I think we have plenty of offerings here. So, in, in, to be frank, board, I, I'm saying we need to do the responsible thing, which is to bring us before the town and let them vote on it. It's going to be yes or no. The dollars are going to be what drives this. The quality of education, I would argue, we can provide here. I don't think there's an argument about that. No. We don't have a seventh grade, so we need to send our, our sixth graders somewhere when they're done. Well, we have the sixth grade here. We heard what folks said at the forum. But what wasn't clear at the time when, the, when that original warrant came on, which was completely advisory, was the cost. Nobody, you know, I would love a new car. But unless I know what it costs, you know, that, that conversation is not place. So it's the same thing here. You can have a lot of folks in town who haven't had kids in this school since the Reagan administration going, under 26000 what is this going to mean for me tax-wise? We hear it every year. And we have cut our budget to the point. So this is, this is a big deal. So how, so, but I, I certainly support Aaron's comments about, Absolutely. about up, there's a very short period of time, but that's, it's a very it should should it pass? That's yeah. a very short period of time. You're rolling the dice. I I I don't disagree with Tom. I mm. I think we should put it on. But I think it's. I it's believe that we don't put it on. Then we won't. You're right. Then we won't. And then you won't. One way or not. Well, consensus. Agreed. 
All right. And then it goes on with school board does not recommend. And I think that's something we have to make very clear to the budget committee. So I, that's why I think they should go on the sides. Yeah, it doesn't hurt. Because I think the budget committee needs to know where we're coming from on this. Yeah, there, yes, that will be. Mm -hmm. Katie has those fours. So yeah. I think we'll be discussing them. Yeah. Do we want to? Do we do want them now? Yeah. Okay. Why, why don't we get? Them? We're, we're discussing warrant articles. Why don't we? Right. Yeah. All right. Right. That's correct. Um, uh, let's discuss them at the very end of our meeting after we had non-public. So uh, because we have to decide if we're ratifying the. Um, yeah. That's on here. So, so we don't want to have that discussion until we know what we're doing in the past. Okay. Uh, so it's $1.11. $1.11 for the sixth grade. Okay. Do you want me to just do the ones that I can tell? Sure. All right, yeah. so the operating budget is $0.06. Cents. Um, $1.11. Cents. Cents. Cents for the sixth grade. And then $0.51 cents for our decrease in revenue. Doesn't that go in the budget? Isn't that part of the budget? Oh yeah. It increases so we're not getting the revenue before getting the budget. Right. So the, so the budget goes up six six cents and then then plus fifty fifty one. Fifty one. So it's fifty seven for the operating budget yeah. and then the revenue and then a dollar eleven for the grade space. And those are the only ones except, except for the collective bargaining agreement that have money involved. Right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other okay. So it almost doubles our. Uh, thank you. Okay, I think that was a good way to do it. Okay. Any. We can come back, or we're not done, obviously, with our own all discussions. So, do you, are, right, you, so are you going to recommend or not recommend? So, okay. we should do that now so that I can right, add yep. it to the slides yes. if you want that. Yep. yep. So, I, I think we can do, we'll do it by consensus at this point, no formal voting. Mm -hmm. We can do that if we need to after the, uh, the next time around. So, on the budget, knowing that it is a 57 cent uh, increase in the budget, and, and Emily, um, if, if there was no pushback at the budget committee meeting when this was all presented, correct? On, on, I mean, is there anything that you think we should know that the budget committee had to say? No, I don't think so. No. Okay. But have they, have they ever? I guess. Oh, uh, yes. I guess, I guess, like they, I guess they have. Oh, no, no. During the meeting? Yeah. But I know what you're saying. Yeah. Right. I'll just have a year. Right now, the class would not be to say. No, I don't. I, I, I don't. That's the case right now. I believe they have to say that they need to know. We, the school district needs to know that going in, they can't get blindsided by it at that public hearing. Okay. So, I would say we recommend Article 5. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Same with eight. Yes. I want an agreement. Again, no taxation. Nine withdrawal. Nine withdrawal. Definitely yes. <laughs> and then we're going to not recommend that. What? Yes. Yes. I don't know. I really did it. And and no on on ten. And then I'll add them to the slides. Right, final consensus. Yes, yes, yes thank slide. you. Thank you. And since, yes. we're, since we're putting these together, is that the order that you would like them in as well? About well, order now? So. Um, uh, this, this order, I until, until we know what the petition one comes. Okay. Is that, <coughs> any, yes, any thoughts fair. on that? Yes. This, is, this, is, th this has been such the order that has always gone in, mm -hmm. okay. up to, you know, up to the withdrawal and the, you know, up to the two that don't, that are new. We've, and we, we did put tuition ahead of, so, so the, the other thing is, do we put tuition ahead of capital reserve for the building? Yeah, I, I mean, I don't get Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, then. So back to now, now back to um, why, Jen, uh, why Jen is here, which is sort of the, the deliberative session discussion in a sense. And now we're jumping ahead to the deliberative um, discussion. Um, 
which is getting getting the word out and, and communicating and all those sorts of things. Now, Jen, you get the withdrawal committee together again? For yeah. One, one last time or a couple last times? Yes, we, um, we were waiting for the Department of Education to have that approval to come back, which is good. So thank you. Um, so our next step is to get back together, determine, um, based on the warrant article language, familiarize it, as well as provide some of the background information that helped us get to where we are today. So we have some kind of, we have some question, FAQs, some quick questions and answers. We have a more detailed deck, so we can get this over to you. Um, but then we probably need something in the middle, and we also all as a group that we wanted to hit social media and we wanted to be available to the public. So we um, want to get the group back together, talk about how we might approach social media. We do a Facebook page, we've got the website, we've got the town page, so there's lots of different ways from a social an author to do a video. I was hoping you forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, one thing I remember. <laughs> um, so we, we did talk about that. Um, as well as um, I'd like to see us have some kind of open coffee or evening tea or something, open form at the library so people could just come in and ask questions if they wanted to. We may or may not get attendance at something like that, but um, we have tried to have our meetings away from the school so that people who aren't comfortable used to coming into the school, because it is for the, the whole town to vote. We want to make sure that it's not just the school article, but it's the town article on um, and get the news out. Um, we also talked about doing a mailer. I think we have a little bit of money left in our budget mm -hmm. um, to do a mailer. So I have to pull that together. It'd be at, at, from a timing perspective, I just need to get my calendar straight. But that'd be for the but for the ballot. Yes. So for the, well, yes. Yeah, so so the deliberative session for the deliberative session, which right. is the fourth. Yep. Is it fourth? Yes. Yeah. 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 And then the voting. Is And in between there, we'll all be voting on primary, too, so. <laughs> it's a win. This is a very bad year. <laughs> yeah, so we'll probably do the mailer between the deliberative session <coughs> and the vote. Uh -huh. um, yes. So, we have some stuff to ramp up in the next probably week or so to get ready yes. for the fourth. Offer something probably really close to that. I don't think we'll get any bang for our buck or something mm -hmm. tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, and then we'll, we'll ramp up again. That sounds good. Um, Use colored paper for your mail. Bright color. Take the right color. Find the right color. So we can bring that back through. Obviously, we have Erin and Judy on the committee um, for I don't know, the approval process for that now. Well, there won't be a. It, it'll be the withdrawal committee approving it, not. Um, not the school board. We're not meeting again anyway. We're doing all this discussion now because the timing is that we're not meeting again until after that. So that's why we're. So appreciate your coming in tonight to discuss it. But any any thoughts from the board or? No, this is good. Yeah, that's really. really it's really going to be very helpful. Yeah. All right. You're going to get as many people as you can, and, you know, and they're going to tell others. Bye. It's just, it's confusing. I mean, yeah. we got yeah. some feedback. People did see the online, the, mm -hmm. the presentation online, and it's, I mean, it took us a good four months to figure out what we were doing before mm -hmm. we <laughs> started, yeah. you know, yeah. getting. I expect that you can bring people up to speed in an elevator conversation. It's kind of naive, so we do our best. It, it um, is, but I mean, obviously it's like, but when we're here, right? and if we don't vote for it, yeah. Summersworth is ready to reinstitute their withdrawal committee. Correct. And, and that's something we need to remember to be able to tell people. Yeah, right. They're ready to reinstitute and withdraw. So, <laughs> right. I think we're going to get the same services and it's about the same cost. Right. I think those are the, the big ideas. That the same services at the same formula. I think we, if we say the same formula, yeah, the same if, if, we, if we can't guarantee the same cost, but right. say the same formula, mm -hmm. please don't. Mm -hmm. And you don't have any concern with the contract um, and how that the preliminary contract. With no, it's already it's already been signed by both um, both uh, school boards. Okay. So um, it is it is it is ready to go based on whether or not it was, how the withdrawal vote goes. Right. So it'll be seamless. Yes. Mm -hmm.
it will be absolutely seamless. And, and of course, the key there is, what is it, three-fifths? Yeah, yes. three-fifths. I mean, we need 60% uh, to uh, yeah. uh, okay. As we're out in the, sort of out in the cold. Sorry, shaking hands with this There you go. <laughs> Thank you, Jen. There's seven of us, right? <laughs> Thank you, Jen. Is there anything else that you yeah. want to share? Anything else the board wants to? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, really, well, we appreciate it. All right, next up is new business, the Water District uh, Communication Correspondence, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. In your packet, you've got the, the letter of... Uh, uh, concern and inquiry that also the responses that we got back about the about the water commission mm -hmm. all right so what we know is that we we can't have a, a, a vote a vote even though we're, we're big users of the water we, we, we don't have a vote because we're not a resident a resident in the water district so so what can, what can we as a board do and maybe this is the next correspondence then to direct Bob to the next correspondence is what can we as a board do to make sure that we're that the that RGS that, that is is fully informed of what's going on in a timely manner and can stay involved with some of these things. I mean that's sort of my concern at this point. Mm -hmm. The rest of you but Jen, well Sounds like uh, Tom or I could attend some of the meetings. Proxy. To the meetings, um, but yeah, I, I think that the the main thing is being informed about things ahead of time um, that might affect the school. Uh, so I, maybe that. The interesting thing about this correspondence is this sentence. There are two members of the school board or are voters of the district who our names. And they are certainly welcome as individuals to voice their concern meeting. The irony of that is how many times have we been to those public meetings where they didn't allow any public discussion? No matter what the issue, even the people who had questions regarding killing, nothing. They would allow no comment. So well, that, that is a concern. It, so, but, and, that's why, and that's why I think it's important that maybe we make a slightly different request. Not that the board to always attend and report back it, to someone, to Rich, to Bob, to me, if we're doing something in the next day or the next week, but that we have some sort of formal pool as some sort of formal communication with the water district. So, so that we don't have, so that we don't be responsible for sending someone to the meetings. I mean, I think... I, Does the school get notifications that everyone in the water district gets? I don't know. I mean, like, oh, there's a meeting coming up, or hmm. notifications? Do you get those? I think so. Does the, the, all right, so the water district doesn't get them, so apparently the school does not. I don't know. I mean, you're talking about correspondence about anything, or just notifications? Sometimes there'll be a letter. Yeah, but that's the school yeah. Yeah. Minute, you know, where minutes are available. They, um, when they say they were going to increase the rates, they yes, there was sent a out a letter to the budget committee. They said, yeah. Does the school <coughs> get that type of a notification? Do we know? It comes with the bill. Uh, do you know, Rich? Oh, does it come with the bill? I don't know. The, the bill is a little postcard. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure we've seen any other correspondence. How is the rate has been increased until I mean you get the new because I find out about from her some day then. All the post but it's little well, postcard. I guess the question I have is what exactly are we asking them for? Well let, I guess I'll, I am going to ask our administrators and, and sort of put Rich and, and on the spot perhaps, but what would be important to know um, um, in a in a really timely manner? But there are things, for instance, the, the big work that's coming up on Willie Street is going to affect the school regardless of when it's done. So, I, I, and I don't know, I, I guess, how do we ask the water district to make sure that, that, that the school is informed and planning for things that have to happen? Well, I mean, I suppose based on Karen's dissertation here, we can, one of us can attend the meeting, 
I'm with the school board. I know I'm also a member of the water district. And we would like to be assured we're going to be given ample notice of any shutoffs, changes, tests, anything like that, especially having to do with the upcoming uh, work. But wouldn't it, and then just, uh, wouldn't it be better if that was a formal relationship between the administration, either in this building or you, rather than committing one of you to go to the meetings and say that? This is the response in writing. Are there, what do you think about are, are there minutes posted? Do they have minutes? Um, there are recordings so. of the meetings. I don't know if somebody's actually taking minutes. I think there are minutes. But I could certainly draft a letter requesting any kind of minutes or any kind of um, you know, advance notice for for when they're doing the work or rate changes or anything like that. I'm not sure that and they, and you know they've made it pretty clear that, that they're not going to be um, allowing us to be part of that. Right, but but they did in, in the last in the last meeting that I attended, which was probably not the last meeting, but about having all the residents affected by the work on Willie Street being part of the planning of how it's going to go. That's very nice, but the school is the big, biggest area affected. And if the road gets closed down, if they close down our parking lot, which is what they were talking about doing, it makes a big difference to us. Yeah. And it's more that kind of thing. So, so presumably, if they were going to include others in the planning of this, they were going to reach out to them some way. Mm -hmm. So maybe the ask is just reach out to us, just like you would any other user of your services when you're going to do something that affects us. Mm -hmm. I can put that into a, a request for information, a, rest, a request for any kind of rate changes, and also a request to be involved as much as possible in mm -hmm. of, of work that might be done. Or I can put that in a request to see what kind of response we get. And they'll have the, the contact for that, so they'll know who. Right. And I can also ask if there are any formal minutes or anything and where I can access those too, because we can keep track of those after everything yeah. after as well. Well, I can assure you, and I'm sure Jen would back me up, they are very quick in responding to requests for information. Well, the, the, this, this, is this, isn't, this isn't actually a formal request for information. No, no, but if you're asking for minutes, you know, don't be surprised no. if it takes, you know, an inordinate amount of time to get anything. It's, I, I, I unfortunately I don't have a lot of faith having witnessed these meetings. Um, it's just the behavior is sometimes bizarre. And people they are asking questions. If your question regarding upcoming construction to have uh, you know the willingness on the part of the commission to actually take the question no matter what it is. And I think that, you know, my recommendation would be to the commission. Uh, I don't know who you'd CC in town. Unfortunately, I don't believe the, uh, the select board has any real jurisdiction. Well, I, I think at this point, we're just trying to establish this relationship. And I think at this point, they did respond but they're to telling you, but, the, but hear me out. They're telling you that the only people that can talk at these meetings, if they allow it are people on the school board who live in the district. So if you had no one that lived in the district, mm -hmm. you wouldn't have the opportunity to speak. I think that's outrageous. And you made it very clear that you're to speak as individual residents, exactly. not as members so, of the school board. This is, you know, it just, you know, it's just one more example. So, well, yes, and I think, I but let, let's not make, let's not make again. problems before, for our, for ourselves. I mean, it, it, yes, well, I, but just I, because... What I'm telling you is that you're, they're, they're, on, they're only, the only venue, the only avenue you're going to have is to have people that actually live. Okay. How that necessarily appropriate, because... Your whole, your school is in the district, and so well, that shouldn't even be a, a concern. And that's why I think a request to will be things that affect the school in, in a timely manner is 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 really the next step and to see how it goes. I think it is. Yeah. I mean, there's not much else we can do. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Okay. <laughs> Thank you. A shot? Okay. A shot. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, now the wellness policy review. Oh, there's so much going on. Oh my gosh. So the wellness policy uh, we, that we approved. That's what it's called, right? We, yes, we approved yes. these these calls. So, um, so one of the things we have to do is to uh, convene the district convene a representative wellness committee that will meet at least four times a year. So my question is, I guess to, uh, to Bob, is to um, when, when do we have to for convene this committee to sort of, uh, well, because that's the first step. Yeah, I think that it would be reasonable to establish a committee <laughs> so they can start that process. All right. And so that we establish a committee. All, All right. So, <laughs> so is from the school itself. This is how it's comprised of. I'm reading directly from the policy. So that's two people, and they could be, and they and they recommend things like a building administrator or staff like a nurse, counselor, a regular ed, health or physical education teacher. That's their recommendation. So two of those types of people. Uh, at the community member, and I put a question. So I'm. It might be really good to work with the PTO, and if we could get like a PTO rep there, we've got a parent and a, you know. So we had someone reach out recently. She's also, that might be a good. Okay, good. So anyway, I'm thinking that. So maybe a PTO member there. And then at least one rep from the district's food service contracted provider. I believe we have one person, right? Isn't it just Janet? Mm -hmm. Well, we also have a food service director that works for Cafe Services oh, that okay. does both districts. Oh, okay. She's on the wellness committee in some respect, so I guess okay. it could be either of those people. Okay. They may know more what goes on in this building, so. She used to go. Yeah, she used yeah, to Yeah. She's willing to, uh, anyway, I'm <laughs> leaving out. My recommendation is, if you would like to delegate to me to form the committee, I don't mind doing that. Uh, yes, and then at least one school board member to act as liaison and the superintendent <laughs> for designee. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm, so, I'm the designee. So you're the de Oh, perfect. 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 I think you're the designee. <laughs> <laughs> as much as um, Katie loves to be involved in this with the food service, it, it makes sense that Katie is... This is, is part of my food service application every year as well, so... Right. I, so it yes, makes I sense that she's involved that does, like, in that. Yeah. Me. yeah. Wow. You can fight over it. <laughs> well, the good, that means you get to be <laughs> from the school if you <laughs> want to. <laughs> I, I think it's important to have myself, but then two reps from the school. All right, so that's three reps from the school, <coughs> essentially, which which is which is more than uh, is required. It says it. At least. Yeah, I don't think that's restricted. Okay. Okay. Uh, what they they they're very clear about one school board member though. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am going to say that this is something near and dear to my heart, and um, I am I am willing to to do this unless someone else really wants to jump right into it. I did cough. <laughs> All right. So, so, so we're starting, and we've had someone reach out from the PTO. Someone, someone who a, a community member reach out who's mm -hmm. on the PTO uh -huh. that might be interested in this specifically, or yes, excellent, yes. And you'll you'll contact that person mm -hmm. and have them contact Rich. Okay. My it, it, the, the board is agreed. Because I saw them last night. All right. So that so that will be the, that will be the uh, beginning. Of, uh, of it all, and I, I'm really not sure. So a triennial progress report, that's three times a year, right? Although we have to meet four times a year, so it's very interesting. It's every three years, yeah, triennial, that would that, be like biennials every two yeah, years. Like yeah, like every annual, yeah, 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 yeah. Right. every year. But, but we also have to do something annually. So yeah, you have to report, I think you have to report out to the community, if I remember correctly. Yeah. To the community and that. Okay. All right. Well, I, I have a template for the triennial okay. um, assessment tool for this policy. Oh, You're basically yeah. you know, evaluating if you've met your goals in the policy. Now, if anyone else is. Step again, I don't want to step I'm interested. I am interested, but since you 
All right, so it's we'll so, so sometime in the next couple of months all this will happen. <laughs> Is there anything else you need right now, then, Rich, to run? No, I'll um, reach out to staff members to try to get that. I'll get the name from him and get the community member. Excellent. And I'll talk to you about who to ask for the food service. Yeah. But, you know, my personal thought is it would be yeah. nice to have someone who's yeah. really in the building. Yeah. If Jenny is wants to do it, then she can do it. If she's not available, then we can yeah. ask that. Thank you very much. You can tell it's near and dear to my heart. I made sure it was on. I made sure it was on. Well, it is important because part of our application for food service, mm. we oh. have to, mm -hmm. you know, show that we're actually doing something. <laughs> I see. All right, we have first readings on um, one, two, three, four, five, five policies. One of which is basically being replaced by another. So it's really just four policies. Uh, have people had a chance to take a look at them? Mm -hmm. And do we, uh, is there any discussion on any one of them? Two are required, two are highly recommended. The required ones are the, um, the last one, J-I-C, and the, uh, the middle one, G-A-D-A. The others are highly recommended. I just was questioning, um, or, or curious on the First on the what? Yeah, yeah. student student conduct. Um, you know, I see a lot of getting the information mm -hmm. information out to students mm -hmm. and parents, and I'm just wondering if I guess teachers included in that, or I guess that's really more of how the how you're going to implement with the superintendent. I see that there are three policies and rules and talking about putting it in the calendar. It's talking about getting information out? Is that what you're... Well, I mean, it, it just talks about that, um, where am I reading? Yeah, Section B, implementation and notice. Um, it says the content of RSA, this mm -hmm. policy and any such rules. Will be printed in the student handbooks and distributed to all students and parents, guardians. I guess I'm, are we assuming, obviously, that the, the teachers, the teachers are privy to all that, or that's something they just know? Well, typically, there's a typically there's a discussion uh, at the beginning of every school year that highlights any kind of new changes to policies, uh, and also <coughs> teachers are periodically encouraged to all of our all of the updates are online. Uh, for them to know and abide by our policies. So I don't expect any teacher to go word by word and read through the policies, but they certainly should have scanned um, through the through the titles and, and uh, at least scan once it's pertinent to that. And it's mostly the instruction and the uh, student policies. Any other questions? All right, then we will uh, vote on moving these for action for our next meeting. Motion. We have we have a, a motion and a second. The second, we have two seconds. We have a second that came in first. That was the first second. Oh my goodness, who's on first? Um, all in favor, uh, aye, aye. 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 Carries. All right, future meetings, as we all know, we'll be, we'll be meeting in the gym at 9 o'clock Saturday morning. Uh, and then we have our deliberative session at 6 p.m. on February 4th. With the snow date of the 6th, hopefully I won't be used. And on the 13th is our next school board meeting. The concert, for the concert and chorus before that, for those of us who wish to attend. We do have we do have non-public, uh, so so uh, before we uh, adjourn, we will take a closing comment. Uh, closing comment. 
one of the things that we're doing in non-public is discussing the collective bargaining agreement, then coming up and taking a vote on it in case any of you are going to stick around for that, just uh, you know, hang around in the hall. I don't know how long we'll be. Um, no comments by visitors. Any comments by board members? All right, then we will uh, go into non-public and we'll take a roll call vote in the non-public. Judy Nelson? Yes. Tom Coons? Yeah. Emily Lee? Yeah. Andrea Anderson? Yeah.